All right, there's the palms that Patrick wants to get rid of. I'm gonna take those and plant them at my ranch. It's gonna be awesome. Here are the palms Patrick wanted to execute. He was gonna kill them. <laughs> I actually made a video here once not knowing he owned this place, saying these palms are rad. They got the cool little coconut trunk, little wander to them, super tall. Been here forever. They're Phoenix Reclinatus from Africa. And uh, usually they multiple sprout multiple trunks. The one over there gave it up long ago. This one is still doing it. See the babies coming up? Somebody's been trimming them off. You get one stock. I already have one of these that I rescued that no one else wanted at my ranch. I'm gonna rescue these. There's plant these dates here instead. Female dates. Can't tell if these are male or female. Hard to say from here. But anyway, here we go. So Patrick, one quick bit of comment. Why did you want to execute these poor plants? Well, I really don't want to execute them. I'm hoping that you're gonna find a nice. No home one's for them. gonna take these. Are way yeah. too tall. So, so if you look at if you look at this ass, I have an adoption center up in the that's, Central Valley. That's what we need. We need to, we need to find a rescue for them. But right. so this is a great property. It goes it goes really far back deep, about 600 feet. The challenge is there's only 60 feet of frontage here, and we're in. This is like the, an A plus location with the prune yard right here, Whole Foods across the street. But so we have a short visibility window. And this is, we rebranded this property calling the, the Palm. I the saw that. I made a video on this you don't even know yeah. about. Yeah. And, uh, and if you go back to the other buildings, there's some really great palms in the courtyards and whatnot. It. I actually know the guy who originally planted the original ones. I'll tell oh, you about that's that later. Awesome. That's Mike awesome. Mike Benton's dad. So we're trying to get some curb appeal with these beauty, these new beauties here. Because are you saying those are ugly? Uh, they're just a, they're a little on the skinny I, side I, for me. You, I like uh, to eat. You, so. well, you promise to come to my ranch and see him if I save him. Yeah, 100%. Put them, okay. well, I'm coming right. to your ranch no matter what. Oh, yeah, we'll do that anyway. Yeah. There you go. It was a wiggle, a jiggle, and a struggle. But, lo and behold, we got it out. Boom, boom, boom. I'm telling you, these are going to look so good at my ranch. So good. They're totally one of a kind, too. These trees are at least 50 years old. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Long way up, long way up. Do I live up to my name? The exotic plant man. These big trees. Going to my ranch, all this stuff's going to the ranch. It's going to be so beautiful. And uh, this is a very special side hat from Asia. I know that. We name it, we got it. Excuse me, sir, I'm gonna have to see some license and registration. You have an over length load. This isn't mine. What do you mean it's not yours? You're and, standing and, next and, to the truck. And, and, so what? No? What are you what are you doing here, son? What what else was it all of this? Um Your dad goes out for for one day of work and he comes home with what? This. <laughs> Alright, not only did we we got these big giant trees. We're at Home Depot, we picked up a couple things. Now we're gonna head to the ranch. We raided my nursery. We got all the good stuff in here. All the goodies. All the goodies. Look at all the goodies. And we're gonna get plant them at the ranch, including two huge 30 foot of trunk and 24 foot of trunk, single trunk Phoenix Reclinata, Senegal date palm. You think that's gonna be a good idea? We got, we don't want to block the views, but these are perfect, right? Yeah. Um, right, let's do it. What'd you say, Carson? At what point does this get illegal? Oh, how far it sticks out? Um, I think you can stick out no more than a third of your bed, which in this case is 20 feet. What's a third of 20? Uh, six something. Um, uh. under that uh, framework, we're definitely illegal two times over plus some. But you know what? It's just palm fronds. It's like your hair hanging out of the back of the car. Right. No big deal, right? Who's gonna care if they bump into your hair? Not a big deal. Plus, I have red flags. As long as you drive it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how I roll. All right, we made it safe and sound. Back to the ranch, Carson and I. 
and with our beautiful, beautiful flowering Phoenix Reclinatas. I don't know, that one's a male back there. I think this one's a male too, pretty sure. Two male studs here. Anyway, it makes this beautiful, beautiful trunk. It's an interesting rough pattern on it from all the foliage breaking off naturally. No one's ever trimmed it with a chainsaw, so to speak. But uh, yeah, here we are. These trees were gonna be executed by my friend, Patrick. Of course, if you were to execute these trees, he probably wouldn't be my friend anymore. I don't, I don't associate with myself with those kind of people who just murder plants, especially really spectacular 60 year old, maybe even older plants like this that are so unique. Anyway, uh, this is a highly desirable plant, a single trunk Phoenix Reclinata. Usually they multi-trunk and it takes many, many years to train them to be single trunks because they look a lot like coconut trees because they have the thin trunk and the feather type foliage and they have kind of a wander to them like a coconut would. A lot of people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. In fact, most, but uh, yeah, and we can't really grow coconuts here. So this is kind of a fun substitute to have. Um, the thing about it is that most people are not looking for 30 foot of trunk trees <laughs> and they're just way too tall. In fact, I had another job where I had two of these trees come out. I had one really tall one and one that was half that size, about 12 foot of trunk. The 12 foot of trunk tree I immediately sold for $10,000. And the guy I bought it said, hey, you have any more? I'll buy as many as you, you want. Yeah. I'm like, I got this tall one. It's twice as tall. He's like, no, it's too tall. And so I tried to sell this tree to people. Nobody wanted to buy this tree. So eventually, guess what I did with it? Look, there it is. Look how pretty it is. It's a beautiful vertical statement without blocking much view. People think, oh, it's just inconsequential. I think it's cute and graces the sky. And then I let all the babies grow out underneath it. So now we have this beautiful palm grove down underneath needs a little trimming, uh, but it, it does a nice job of sort of hiding the house a bit right there. My, and, uh, but look at the beautiful foliage. So it creates a nice little screen in the bottom if you let the, the babies grow. Eventually the babies stop growing if you keep cutting them off. But one of those trees, a shorter tree, still has the, um, still making babies on the bottom. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage and I'll show you why and how this is going to be such a wonderful solution here at El Rancho de Grago, Rancho de Gregorio, Rancho de Chupacabra. All the Hispanic buddies of mine know me as La Chupa, short for Chupacabra, which is a mythical, we think mythical, animal running around Mexico eating uh, sucking the blood out of goats. I don't know why they call me that, but they do. So you can see my dilemma here. Look at this beautiful view, right? I mean, it's just a gorgeous view. Baseball field, orange grove across the street, walnut groves and even balloons off in the distance. See that? So I don't want to block that view, but I do love palm trees, as you know. And It'd be nice to have some vertical elements here. So what to do? Hopefully, one of your friends would be wanting to get, get rid of the skinniest, tallest silhouette trees you can imagine right when you need them, which is exactly what happened with Patrick. So I said, I'm gonna save these trees. You're not gonna kill them. I'm gonna save your soul. I ain't just plant karma. You do stuff like that. You won't be able to walk around on a windy day underneath big trees. They're going to fall on top of you. The plants will get you back. They're all like a team. So what am I going to do? I'm going to stick one just to the right of that Brahia Clara. It's going to be sticking up like this. That one is going to have all the babies in the bottom. So it's going to kind of block the, the view of that road down there, which is nice. The other one will go right behind the Bougainvillea, right down there. That's the taller one. It's 30 foot of trunk. So it's going to be way up in the sky. So we'll look at this view later. Hopefully we didn't block much of the baseball field. I don't think we will. 
but I think they're going to look spectacular. Right now, I don't have any height on this side. And uh, so I have a little bit of height. This queen palm I put in years ago. And this booty over here. And another queen palm over there. But nothing over here. So we'll have a couple punctuations of height. It's going to be funny because there's just two over here. <clears throat> but there'll be three from a distance. You'll look up and you'll see the third one, which we just saw over there. So at least there'll be some continuity and repetition to this garden when it comes to that element. So that's the deal. Uh, it's time to go and dig a hole and get it ready. Hey, Carson. He who dies with the most exotic plants in his garden wins. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm doing pretty well. I don't know. I got to size up the competition. But uh, here we are. And uh, playing king of the mountain here. We uh, got our holes dug. They were pretty easy. Fortuitously, these palms came to us at an amazing moment in timing and history where we, we had these back mounds here that needed something tall and vertical. And uh, here they are. So. Uh, Carson, what do you think about these things? You haven't really seen them standing up, but... I mean, they look pretty cool. They look pretty cool. <laughs> they're, they're super cool. Some people are going to think they're skinny and straggly. Like like Patrick, the guy who wanted to get rid of them. I, that's what he said. And I was like, whoa, man, you're hurting their feelings. I'm like, I love these things. So here we are. And uh, look at they just... <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what a 30-foot of trunk palm looks like sitting over there. But yeah, they fortuitously came to us right at the moment that we needed them. We've been working the garden. The garden's virtually finished over there. And then over here, it's sort of rough still. And these trees, they came to us on the exact day that we needed them, that we were ready for them out of the 54 years I've been running around. Perfect timing to the day. So here we go. I have lots of good karma from the plants. And this is just another example of it. Carson's going to give you uh, an example of uh, what it looks like to be a, the king of the palm tree mountain. And... Uh, here we go. Ready? Here it comes. Oh, he got it. He's got good hands just like his dad. Is it still rolling? Oh, yeah. All right. Got to keep going back. You ready? <laughs> you got the whole thing? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> That's a long load. There you go. Remember, whoever dies with the most exotic plants in their garden wins. Yeah, let's do this. All right, Carson. Back to work. Oh, here we go. It's key number one. And uh, this video, True Plant Stories, Golden Gate Palms, sponsored by Corona Beer. Right here. That's why I'm wearing this shirt. Right here. They uh, got this shirt for free because they're, they're sponsoring me. Sort of. I got this free at a bar where they had uh, some promotion. But they don't really sponsor me. But if you know anybody at Corona and they want a really good... YouTuber to sponsor. They don't have to pay me. They just have to send beer. And I will, I don't know, get everybody excited about their beer and palm trees because they go hand in hand. So here's the short one, if you can believe it. And it's going to go right here, right behind the Bahia Clara. There's Carson posing for all the girls. How much fan mail do you get out of YouTube? I don't get any. No? I thought a guy like you'd get a lot. Anyway, I can understand why I don't. All right, there it is. Woo! Tree number one, installed. Yeah! Tree number two, getting trimmed by Jorge. And getting strapped by Carson. Time to move this crane. I love the way it looks. Absolutely love the way This doesn't happen often, but I made a grave error, and it's something pretty serious just happened out here. We got our second tree in pretty much. We hadn't straightened it yet, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this helicopter comes flying over, big yellow helicopter, and it lands on the baseball field with a big dust cloud. I'm like, what the heck? That's never happened before. 
and I, a couple of guys in suits come out and another guy that looked like a full drug lord, like a kind of like a Mexican drug lord. Just, he looked like El Chapo or something. And he walks up here right in front of these two guys in suits. They follow him with briefcases. And I look at the helicopter a little closer. It's got the Corona insignia on it. It's yellow and yellow and blue. I'm still stunned as to what's going on. They come up and basically they're like, they heard about what I was doing. They heard about how I wanted to be sponsored by them. And they were pissed. And the reason they were pissed is that I didn't follow the way they wanted it done. And they made it very clear how they wanted it done. They want it done exactly the way the shirt shows. All right. They want two trees right next to each other, kind of leaning apart a little bit, just like this. They said it looks stupid to have these two trees look like goalposts and they really need to be in a group. They further elaborated that it will not impede the view of the baseball field, which you see this tree on the right does. And they also made the very valid design point that if I do put them close together like this, that we will be able to run a hammock between them, thereby giving off the Corona beer fantasy even more. I wanna to apologize to Corona for putting this like this. I should have thought about that myself. They said that once I do this, then they will uh, consider uh, having me as, you know, one of their sponsoring me, basically. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move that tree to here. We'll time lapse it so you can see it. And again, I wanna to apologize to Corona for getting it wrong, and I'm gonna get it right right now. And there you go, folks. I would like to introduce to you. On the left, standing at 26, 24 foot of truck, weighing in at about 3,500 pounds, is Droopy, the Reclinata. And its cousin on the right, at an even 30 foot of truck, weighing in at a slightly more 3,900 pounds, is its beloved cousin, Stiffy. That's right. Stiffy. Stiffy. Droopy. And that's pretty much uh, what we got done today. I'm really glad that the Corona folks showed up, set us straight on uh, what we were supposed to do with their trees. Well, they're my trees, but they sort of consider them their trees because it's almost like a, they acted like it was like a copyright issue or something. I said it was really important. If I want to have any chance of being an ambassador for these guys, I got to get it right. So starting right now, I'm going to pay particular attention. And I want to thank Corona for coming out here and setting me straight and considering me as a uh, ambassador to their product. And oh no, did I really do that? <laughs> they are never, they're never going to hire me as an ambassador. <laughs> At least I got two beautiful poems though. Darn it. Take two. All right. That's the view of the baseball field before we put the palms in. And that is the view of the baseball field after we put the palms in. What do you think?